<laughs> Hello, everyone out there, podcast world. Hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Church, sitting virtually next to my co-host, Joshua Crouch. Today, we're going to talk about branding, and we're going to go kind. We we typically do high level stuff here. Don't get too much into the details. Today, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to go in detail as to what branding is. We have Stephen Hurhan. Oh man. <laughs> I only said it once and I nailed it the first time. And yeah, anyways. We're going to go so, more into the strategy behind the brand because most people think of brand as my truck or what it looks like, the visual. They don't really, they don't really, and this, I guess this kind of segues off from the episode we did with Cassie when we talked about bringing that brand to life and giving it more meaning in your community and stuff like that. And Steven is an expert at this and he's taught I think over 20,000 students, brand building strategy and stuff like that. He's got a lot of knowledge and one of the, one of the things, some good questions for him today. One of the things that I've learned as a, just to be a business owner and learning in general is that if I can teach it, then I know it, like I can absorb the knowledge pretty well, but when it comes time to regurgitate the knowledge. That's when if you really understand it or not. You, that's a really interesting point because we're starting to do that with our internal team training. So we're training someone, having them do a little studying, and then they have to teach it back to us. And then they realize where they're weak. So it's a it's an interesting topic. That's a totally different topic on training your team, but it's a yeah. it's a very good exercise in making sure that your team really truly understands something and can actually teach it back to somebody else. Yeah. And we've done this in tech on our technical side of things like capacitors, because I get a lot of uh-huhs and yes, mans. And so whenever it's time to, all right, now I want you to teach me how to do a capacitor or how to test a capacitor, how to oom it out, all that good jazz. And then you get the deer in the headlight look and you're like, oh, I wasn't really paying attention. I was just saying yes. So you'd shut up. I'm very aware of that. So that's why I want you to teach me back. So anyways, I'm excited to, to have Steven on the show and to go a little bit more into detail and learn the why behind your brand and, and what that should be when it comes down to it. But yeah, let's get started with the show. Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hey, welcome to the show, Stephen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for staying up with us. You're coming. He's coming to us from Australia, so it's about 11 p.m. over there right now. Yep. Yeah, I'll be hit. I'll be hitting the hay straight after this one. <laughs> Heard that. So tell us a little bit about you and your background and everything you got going on. Yeah, I'm based out of Sydney, Australia, and that's that's where I created my agency. And I've had my agency for over ten years. Mm -hmm. My background before that was actually in finance. I was working in the stock market just before the GFC, doing stock and options trading and advisory. So I had a complete shift from that point of view. But the, the background of my finance went hand in hand with the stuff that I started to do with branding, which was moving into the strategy side of things. So with my agency, I was providing design services, branding services. And what I started to notice was that there was a change in the market. We had a lot of these online platforms come about at the time it was Odesk and Upwork and you have freelancer.com and things like that. And the relationships with the clients changed a little bit on this side because they started to go online for kind of cheaper services. So I, I started to look differently at what I was doing. And the area that I started to explore was strategy because there was a ton more value in terms of what the brand is about. So that led into this bigger market of realizing how much of an education gap there was within that space. And that led into Brand Master Academy. So that's the brand that I run today. And I teach 
branding professionals and entrepreneurs how to build their brand through strategy rather than just looking at their brand as this visual thing. You know, there's so much more involved in what your brand is. And that's what I teach on a day to day basis. That's awesome. We have, so we mentioned Dan Antonelli. He's actually, at least I think he's in the house. He, he did comment on the live stream. So <laughs> I got his attention this morning when I tagged him in the post, which was great. So I guess let's start diving into the million dollar question. What is a brand? And I know it's a really vague question, but let's start peeling back the onion a little bit. And Whoa, before we get soon? started, was that no, too soon? I have to know in Wisconsin, is there a G in onion? <laughs> 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 Come on, man. We got, don't pick on the Northern boy here. We got an Australian Ooh. accent. We got a Southern. I don't have an accent. <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> continue on, Steven. So yeah, that that's a pretty big question and it can go as long or as broad as you want. But really, I would distill your brand into your reputation. Quite simply, that's, that is what your brand is. We build businesses what we try to do is we try to sell those businesses to our audience now the decisions that they make and the decision making process that they go through take a lot of things into consideration the impact that you have on them through your messaging through your social media channels through your marketing that really shapes their perception and then they're going to choose which brand suits them but a lot of that comes down to the reputation the perception that you have created in their minds so a lot of people think of the brand as the visuals and you can't blame entrepreneurs getting in thinking that their brand is a logo because that's how it's evolved in this day and age where it's so easy to start a business and there are so many branding professionals selling their services whether it's logo design website design as branding but really it muddies the water and confuses things. Brand or branding is really about your reputation and building that reputation and nurturing that reputation with your customers. Why do you think so many people, and is it just because it's the visual element, the first thing people see is, oh, they have great branding when all they do is see a truck or they see a logo and they really don't know anything about the actual strategy or like, the company culture that plays a part in their branding and stuff like that. Do you think it's just because it's the first thing people see that's like, they either have good branding or bad branding just based on that? No, I, I think I, I, when I think of a brand, I, I think of an iceberg that I, I tend to think in, in metaphors and visualizations. And the iceberg is one that I think is very relevant when it comes to a brand, because we can all see the tip of the iceberg. We can all see the logo. We can all see the visuals. Now, those who are in the branding industry, who work within the branding industry, certainly within strategy, know that below the surface, there is so much more going on. But everybody above the surface, they don't necessarily need to know that. We all have relationships with brands. You have a relationship with branding. I have a relationship with branding. Every man and his dog has a relationship with branding, whether it's getting a, a can of Coca-Cola or wearing a pair of Nike trainers. We all have relationships with brands. And if you think about the brands that are in your life, that's when you can really start to peel back the onion with a G and start to understand what brands actually mean. Because if you think of a brand that you like, what Josh, what brand do you like? What's a brand that's in your life where you're part of their cult following? Under, Under Armour. Armour. Yes, Under Armour. Armour. <laughs> I knew that one. <laughs> so when you think of Under Armour, to use more than just the logo, right? That what Under Armour has done is they've created a perception in your mind about what that brand means. And that goes beyond just that logo. They've created a tribe of people who all share similar characteristics, similar traits, similar beliefs. And they've done all of that through strategy by understanding who their audience is, what their audience is passionate about and then communicating that to them in a way that's going to resonate with them. So let me ask a question. How, when, whenever Josh mentioned, we see a brand and we're like, okay, that's a good brand or especially in our community. And we think about a brand that's done pretty well. A lot of times Josh is right. As, uh, as a business owner, I assume that it is the logo. That's what's created that brand. Is there a time or is there a, a, an amount of 
subconscious that we've been, there's so much of us that we've seen about this brand, we've recognized it in the community and then it comes full circle. And now all of a sudden we're like, okay, yeah, that's a good brand. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great question. And we, there are so many different touch points when it comes to a brand and modern brands today can have upwards of a hundred touch points and a touch point can be anything from the website to the social media page, the blog, the video, the customer service, even the onboarding process, the email drip sequence that they might get. These are all touch points. Hmm. And this is how our minds are shaped and our perceptions are shaped about what a brand means. It's not through one interaction. It's not through one logo. It's through multiple different angles, multiple touch points, and they all shape our perception about what this brand means, the value that it can potentially hold for us and where it fits into our lives. Absolutely, it's not just about the logo. When you see the logo, what that sparks is recognition. You see the logo and that, that visceral connection really connects your memory to all of the other experience that the experiences that you have had with that brand and then collectively that becomes that brand's perception so the logo of course is that tip of the iceberg it's what is front and center it's what people remember and it's probably why people think of a logo when they think of a brand because it's the easiest thing to remember but that's just a visual cue to take us back to all of our experiences that we've had with that brand from, from when the plumber knocks on your front door and you open that up and he's got a big smile and a handshake to the invoice that comes through, the emails that they send through. These are all individual touch points. And when they see that logo, they remember all of those touch points or they've created a perception in their mind about what that brand means. So when it comes to somebody who is thinking about rebranding, okay? Their business has grown or they just wanna do it now because they don't wanna wait until later because they've seen other people have success with it. And, and I know most, a lot, like I mentioned earlier in the, before we got on in the home services industry, I know we have one person who does really well, but that's not the fit for everybody. What should they be looking for in an agency before they hire someone? Or are there, are there some questions they should be asking to make sure that this is, they're going to get a, a good result from working with this agency. Yeah, one of the one of the best questions you can ask an agency is about their processes. How do they go about developing the brand? Now, what you would hope to hear are customer centric responses, because at the end of the day, your brand exists for one reason and for one reason only, and that is to serve the customer. Without that customer, your brand doesn't exist. There's no reason for your brand to exist without that customer. So everything starts from the customer and understanding who that customer is, is a huge part of the branding process. When you think about, I need to rebrand or I need to get a brand, you might think, okay, I need a logo. What looks good out there? And that's how a lot of freelancers or certainly self-taught designers might go about designing logos. And that's where the confusion really starts to come in terms of what branding is, because these same operators are selling their services as branding services when really they're not really branding services, they're design services, they're providing designs, they're providing logos, but they don't go into the detail that they should if they're supposedly selling branding services, because branding is really about understanding that customer. It's really understanding their world. So what's going on in their lives at the moment? What kind of challenges are they going through? What desires do they want? What kind of outcome do they want to achieve? What are their fears as well? If they don't fix this problem now, what's going to happen down the road? And what are all the emotions attached to those fears and to those desires? Because that's where you can really connect with your customer and your audiences by tapping into those emotions. So if anybody's thinking of rebranding or thinking of going out and getting a brand for the first time, they need to remember the, the iceberg metaphor and, and realize that their brand goes a lot deeper than that. If, and if they can align with an agency that thinks along those lines, that thinks customer first and looks out into the market, looks at the competitors, and tries to find a unique position for that their brand in the market that's easily memorable that's when you can that's when you can start to to believe that the agency that is going to serve you will be serving 
your best interest because they're thinking about the customer and in thinking about the customer, they're thinking about your brand. Man, that was a, that was an awesome response like that, that there's a lot of stuff really packed in there that I think is very valuable for anyone listening to this. <laughs> yeah. The whole time you're saying stuff, I was like, Oh, I got a question about that. Oh, I got a question about that. I got a question. About yeah. <laughs> but Fire one away. The, what, one of the things that, <laughs> that's awesome. one of the things that I, I did pick up on it, especially towards the end of my AD kicked in on me. The, what I heard was that you need to make sure that the agency that you're working with is going to be looking at all the competition as well to make sure that you don't blend in the white van with a blue logo for an air conditioning company or a blue and red logo is probably not the number one best choice as far as it comes for air conditioning. But I, what I really love what you said there is the the agency asking questions that are customer focused or customer centric questions, which is, it's really, that's a really great point because in the Facebook groups, a lot of us, we see this person's brand as, oh, wow, that's awesome. Or their logo and their new van wrap. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then this one over here is, oh, that one's completely different. How does that work? Their clientele is commercial clients. And then these, and then you have other people who like, I talk to a $45 million a year company and they half their vans aren't even wrapped. The other mm -hmm. half, the wrap is just like their name in like just a regular old font. And they're talking about rebranding. And I was like, I'm not the branding expert, but I'm thinking you, you did something right. You're at 45 million and you've, you don't have a logo on the van. You've, you're definitely figuring out some aspect of it, but whenever it comes to commercial side of things, commercial work, the client might not really care about the van that you pull up in. So it's a different sort of branding. Can you go into it? I don't know, detail about that a little bit, not necessarily, well, I guess not comparing ourselves to everyone else we're seeing in the Facebook groups and having to have the same logo as them. Because I see some people who have gone through and rebranded what I feel like is a hundred times, like three times in, in the period of a couple of years. Mm. And it's, wow. I remember whenever I did a rebrand, I hated my life. I had all this stuff that I had to change up constantly. And mm. so could you go into a, a little bit of detail? That yeah. One thing about rebranding is that you don't, you don't want to do it willy nilly. You don't want to do it for the sake of it. Brand equity is, is the reputation and the value of the reputation that you have built up over time. And if you were to completely change your brand, and like you said, there's, there are companies out there who are changing their brand all the time, then it's, they might as well not have a brand because all you're doing is confusing people. What you want to do, what you're really doing is you're building your reputation. You're building that momentum. And that's what your brand helps to create. It helps to create that momentum. If you're doing the right things with your brand and by the right things, if you're going above and beyond with your customers, which is branding at the end of the day, really branding is relationship building. It's building that reputation and then giving your brand, a visual outlet for people to remember the experience that they've had with you. But if you're doing the right things by your brand and you're starting to build up that reputation, which is brand equity, and people start to recognize your brand as associated with that brand equity and with that reputation, then it might not be the best idea to rebrand or certainly to rebrand again and again over a short period of time. You really, and this is why strategy is so important because if you're just changing visuals willy nilly, it's, it tells that there's no strategy involved because it's just knee jerk reaction stuff. Whereas if you build your brand from the ground up, really considering who the audience is and you really invest in finding a position, a unique position in the market, that's a little bit different from your competitors, something that's easy for your audience to remember. Then you can start to build the visuals around that and go, ha, huh, this is what we want to be remembered for. This is the reputation that we want to build. Now let's build our visual identity to help us associate with that reputation. And once your brand is developed through strategy, then you don't change so quickly because you've done the hard work. You've done the due diligence. You understand who the audience is. You'll understand who the competitors are in the landscape and you'll understand the little reputation that you're trying to build that's different from them and you've built your visual brand from that so 
it's it is definitely important to not be rebranding all the time. I get it if you've if you've created a business and you've you've cut corners early on and you've started to generate a bit of momentum. There's a bit of revenue in the bank now, and you want to go back and do things differently. You want to do things correctly. Then go back and start with strategy. And then once you create your visual identity, you can be confident that visual identity is going to stand the test of time because it's been developed from the strategy. Can I ask you, kind of almost going like back to the very beginning. So somebody- No, no Josh, you're not allowed to ask anything. Not the beginning of the show. I don't want to go back because you guys all make fun of me and my accent. But let's say, I'm assuming there's going to be people listening to this that might be considering doing something with their brand. What would you tell them? Are, are there some things that you would tell them or questions you would have them ask themselves internally if they are ready for that process to happen? Because I think a lot of times people see, again, we have that like social media FOMO, right? Oh man, that, that was a, such a cool brand. I want to do that too. And then they just jump into something, but they're not actually, their business isn't ready for it yet. What kind of and, advice and, and, would you give and people for that? Piggybacking off what Josh said, you mentioned a second ago, like when you first started out the business, maybe you didn't have the funds to to do this, you like create a, a visually appeasing a, a logo. At what point is it okay to do that, to spend the money? Like, I know of some people who they like, that was their first investment was that before they invested even in a van was spending a lot of money, getting that process done. And maybe they didn't necessarily or have the strategy built out, but yeah, that go ahead. Yeah. Look, I, I think we, I think all listeners here, you guys included, we've all, we all have the same experience in that starting a business for the first time it's a bit like walking into a room blindfolded you've got no idea where things are and you've just got to fumble yourself around in the dark and you learn pretty quickly where the table is when you bang your knee so you know it's the same within business it's the same you've got to learn these things you've got to make these mistakes but definitely one of the biggest mistakes i see and going back to your question josh what should what questions should be asked it should be really at the at ground zero is about that customer. Now, there there is this, uh, this saying within branding, if you try to be all things to everybody, you end up meaning nothing to anybody. So if you try to go after the entire market, then it's more difficult to become remembered or to own a position in such a broad market because you're fighting with all the other sharks within that space nothing is really there to make you more relevant uh, to this to this market but if you have an affinity with a certain group of people if you understand a certain segment of that market a little bit better than let's say the broader market that is potentially a position that you can go in and try to own so the position that a brand tries to own is a little place in the mind of the audience about what that brand means and i'll give you a little bit of an example here and this is probably one of the most famous examples of positioning but it was back in like the late 60s or the early 70s hertz were dominating the car rental market and avis was wasn't doing great at all they were losing market share and they came up with a positioning strategy to change their messaging and kind of sit into this number two position so they they created a tagline saying we're number two but we try harder and what they did in doing that was they put a message out into the market that assumed the second place role but at the same time told their customers that listen we're we know we're not the biggest but we try and that just create they created this memorable position in the mind of the audience and they turned it around they started to claim back market share and they they doubled their revenue the following year so that's what positioning is it's about defining a reason to give your audience as to why they should remember you over all your competitors because at the end of the day you're out there fighting with the exact same people who are trying to serve your customers and if everybody's saying the same thing then all you have to do is look at them and, and look at what they're not saying what all of these people are not saying and then think to yourself, okay, there's a certain segment of the market over here and I know what their problems are and I know what their challenges are. If I position my brand as the obvious choice for them, 
then I can dominate that market. I don't need all of the other market. I don't need all these other, I just need a decent slice of this market and I'll be super profitable. So positioning is really important. So asking who your audience is and then finding a compelling reason to give them to choose your brand over your competitors. So how do we, how do you know, how do you figure out what they're not saying? Like it's the force for the trees kind of thing. Like sometimes we're so much into the weeds that we don't realize that we're doing the exact same thing and we're saying the exact same thing that everyone else is saying. How do you pull yourself back and say, all right, let's step back and see what they're not saying. Yeah. And look, it's a good question because we do get tend to get caught up in our own industries and sometimes we're too close that that we can't see the obvious thing that's going on but really when you start to to look at your brand from a strategy point of view from a strategic point of view that positioning is so important so that's why we start with the audience we start with the audience because and look i won't lie this is difficult when especially when you're starting out there's this it, it's it's counterintuitive that you need to close the door to all this other potential business to say, no, we're only going to focus on this. Now, say no that, so that you can start saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. But look, you don't have to do that. You can still go after a position and serve other clients until you get so much of the market that you have positioned for that. Then you start closing the door to other business. So yeah, it, it, you can get too close to it. And if you are too close to it, then it is difficult to see, look, we're all saying this, but what can I say differently? And that's why I'm saying you go back to the customer, you go back to defining a specific segment of the market that you want to go after. Now, this is different for everybody. You might have a type of service or a type of technology um, or a type of relationship or a type of background where you've got the skill sets or the network to be able to go in and be the expert in this place in a way that your competitors can't. And that's obviously in a position that would be a little bit more obvious to someone with a bit more expertise in a certain area. But you might have an aunt or an uncle or a family member with a certain type of business and you've known this type of business your whole life. So you have a bit more insight into who the business owners are and the challenges that they go through. And you can use that to resonate with them. So there are many different ways that you can find your position in your market, but definitely understanding that if you try to be all things to everybody, you'll just blend in with everybody else. And if you are able to segment a slice of the market, it'll be so much easier to be more relevant to them. And if you're more relevant to them, it'll be so much easier for them to remember you. Yeah, that's, that's great. a super important point, I think that can't be hammered home enough. I did want to get to one. We had a live question here in the feed, which I'll pop up on the screen and read it. They said, branding is also only effective if people see it. What's the percentage of your marketing that should be spent on branding versus direct marketing? Now, obviously, we don't expect you to give an exact answer because it's different for everybody, but do you have a some a ratio or something that you generally give advice on for people that ask this question? Look, of course you need to mobilize your message and that's what marketing is. But the strategy is the method. The brand strategy is the method and the marketing strategy is the mode. So if you go out into the market and you start spending dollars on marketing, let's say Facebook ads, for example, then if you don't have a strategy, if you don't know exactly who your audience is and what you want to say to them, then your marketing is going to be more expensive because Facebook and the algorithm is not going to be able to find the exact people that you're looking for because you have not defined them in your branding strategy. You have not defined who you're going after and you don't have a clear picture casting a wide net. So your, it's, your messaging is going to be less relevant. So your cost per acquisition is going to be higher. So if you don't do the right things in the beginning, in the long term your marketing is going to be more expensive. But of course, developing your brand as a vehicle is just that you've got you've to fuel that vehicle up and send it out there. And that's where marketing distribution comes into play. So marketing and branding are like yin and yang. You can't have one without the other. They're, they're reliant on each other. 
And if you do it in the right way, if you build your brand through strategy and you understand exactly who your audience is, then you're going to be better prepared to put a marketing strategy together because you're going to know who they are. You're going to know where they hang out and you're going to know the types of messages that they're going to respond to. So I know that there is a tried and tested path to market for entrepreneurs who don't have any insight into branding, which is get yourself a logo, get yourself a website and go out and start throwing money at Facebook ads. <laughs> but if, if you don't have the awareness and the understanding of who your customer is and exactly what you want to say to them, the emotional hooks that you're going to use, the triggers that you're going to use within your copy, then your marketing is going to be more expensive and you're going to, you're going to start leaking money on the front end because you haven't looked after the back end. What I hear you saying is that we need to focus on an avatar. Like we need to determine our avatar or our targeted audience for our marketing. And whenever I first started Service Emperor, I had a challenge with this because I wanted to do all of the, we used a, a company called Melissa Data to gather that information based on our client, our past clients. And because it was brand, we were a brand new company, we had a challenge that we didn't have enough data to know mm -hmm. who our target audience was. And at that point, I'm like, just give me the rich people. That's what I want. <laughs> and, but in, in reality, it, we figured out that we really did well with certain individuals, but it took us a year or so of gathering that information. And it was a struggle for a year for us there. But then it, once we figured out that avatar, then it was very easy for us to create, develop, ad spend and advertising in general that targeted those individuals that so it was there it was a lot more receptive to them than just throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks type thing yeah yeah and look if you have the data to call upon that's great if you ha if you've got the pixel data if you've got the analytics data if you've got all of that data then that's great but there a lot of people build brands or create companies and they're in the position where they're like okay we need to build a brand and that's when they start asking the question for the first time. They don't have any data to go on. They, and they're looking into the market going, who are we going to serve? How are we going to be different? And that's why I said before, it's different for everybody deciding yeah. who that audience is going to be. And you don't always have the data to tell you who your perfect customer is. And just going back to what you said before, I just wanted all the rich people. Somebody else might decide that they just want the rich people as well, but they might get a little bit more niche in exactly what type of rich person that they're going after, what type of house, what type of suburb. And from there, you can start to understand and build that client avatar, that audience persona as to what this type of person responds to. Are their challenges and problems the same as the rest of the market or are they slightly different? And what triggers can you use to really resonate with those? Can is that going to affect your brand identity? Are you going to have a more luxurious looking brand identity to set yourself apart from the rest? So have a black van instead of a white van and have some traditional type that looks more like a high street fashion brand than it does a plumber, for example, because these are the type of people that you want to go after. You want to align yourself with them. You want to trigger them and you want to, you know, you want to be the go-to for this this avatar and if you start showing up in this neighborhood time and again with this black looking van that's completely different to all other plumbers and you decide that you're gonna you're gonna dress slightly differently to to appeal to that luxury market then all of a sudden you're positioning yourself in a more strategic way than just slapping a logo on a white van and getting out there into the broad market yeah and it's so crazy how the colors really matter when it comes to that thought process also. And that's another, that's a rabbit hole we could dive into that let's we'll do that on a different day. But yeah. Josh, do you have any other questions? No, Stephen, where can people find out more about you? Yeah. Brandmasteracademy.com is the website. There's a YouTube channel as well. There's over 150, no, sorry, there's over 250 videos up there now. So if you wanted to dive deep into all the stuff that I've been talking about from positioning to audience personas, customer journeys, differentiation strategy, there's videos on all of that stuff. And yeah, that's just, Stephen is that's brand master Academy for the YouTube channel, right? Same correct. Name. Correct. Okay. And yeah, if you just, if building your brand through strategy is something that you're into or that you believe you could be into, and you certainly should be if you're building a business and building a brand, 
then just devouring all the videos on that channel will give you, you'll have more branding knowledge than 99% of your customers or 99% of your competitors. That's a great resource. So I appreciate you sharing that. We'll make sure that we put that in the show notes as well. Yep. No worries. Hey, we appreciate everything. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Josh, or Stephen. And uh, thank you again, Stephen, for coming on the show today and really sharing all of this with us because it's it, we, it's easy to dive into the weeds on some things, but then it's very easy for people to have FOMO because as an entrepreneur, a lot of us shiny object syndrome is, oh, this is, we don't even need to be focused on this. I need to be focused on this. And I really appreciate you coming in and setting us straight a little bit on that. No problem at all. It's been an absolute pleasure, gents. Absolutely. We'll see you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.